Hello everybody, um, I am going to try to make a video on a modification for the GT2B remote right here, here you see it, this big old remote, trying to mod it into this smaller handheld remote. Um, first off, this 3D printed case here, I bought it from eBay uh, from one of our users, uh, his name is Master Cho, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen his mod, a lot of people use this. But um, I haven't seen a video on the modification itself. It's fairly easy to do. Um, the first one did take me a while because, you know, it's the first time doing it. So I'm going to try to do this second one here on the video. And hopefully somebody will find that useful. Uh, first off, first thing you have to do is obviously disassemble this and take out all the meats of this thing. Um, first thing you do is take off the door for this thing. And I'm sorry if um, the video is a little off because I am doing it in front of the camera and to the side. Uh, first off you get this and what you want to do is take off that lid, take off the controller arm which is supposed to be pretty easy. Did it pretty easy last time but um, if you can't do it just pry it open. Not like you need it anyways. So um, get rid of this. Ah, there it goes. Okay. So get rid of that. It's rubbery. So you can toss that aside. And then there's all these screws here. Take off all the screws you see. Um, this sticker does kind of get in the way, so I like to cut it first. So let's go ahead and cut that. Uh, another thing you might want to do is make sure that these trims here are zeroed. And that right there is at 100, which it is. So that's okay. Anyways, um, maybe you want to take a picture of this or um, at least save this piece afterwards in case you are wondering what everything does. Um, what I have realized is that getting the antenna or getting the thing split apart was a little hard the first time. Let's see how I do it this time, but um, there's a whole bunch of screws. I'm going to try to edit this. Okay, after you remove all these screws, um, keep them. Put that aside. Ah, there it goes. Actually, that was fairly easy compared to the last time I did this. Hey, this actually came apart. Last time it took me a while. Anyways, uh, this part has nothing. Be careful and antenna, you don't want to rip it. But this is a plastic part, throw that away. Um, for this, yank out everything carefully. If it's screwed on, take it out. So this one here is the channel three um, PCB here. We're gonna take that out. Uh, I'm pretty sure we are not gonna be using this part, but just make sure to keep every, all the screws safe. You're gonna yank out those two screws right here. Yank that out. Uh, be careful these clips are kind of squished in here. You don't want to rip it. And there goes that. Let's see. The trigger mechanism here has got two more screws. So I'm gonna yank that one out. <coughs> and yank this one out. I keep saying yank, unscrew it, not yank. But pull that out. I'm gonna pick up the antenna. And just be kind of careful when you do these things. Um, you don't want to break anything. Okay, right here, um, thumb control here has a few screws, so be careful with that. Um, I'm not going to yank this part out. So the wheel right here needs to be taken out. So there's one screw here. And one right there. Kind of hard to get through these screws sometimes. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera's view, but you get the point. This is just screws coming out. Um, let's see, is that all of it? Is there one more? Okay, I think that was it. I'm gonna try to yank this thing out. And oh, there's one more. After you take out the trigger, there is another screw here. So the wheel assembly that was right here had three screws in it. So we'll pull that out. Um, I guess if you damage this part, it's not too bad since you don't need the wheel. Once again, screws, um, keep them. Um, if you look at the screws, let me just go ahead and point this out. On the screw head, there's two different kinds of screws. One has a flatter and fatter head, one doesn't. Um, you wanna keep this one right here, the round ones. The one that has a round top versus like a flat top. Anyways. You'll figure it out later because you need them to put the case together. Anyways, okay, I think I got all the guts out. First thing you do would be to take out the wheel. The wheel trigger here. So there goes that. Um, 
Let's see, so pull the wire out of these holes right here. You could just yank the entire connector out. Uh, there you go. So the connector comes out, this thing put aside, you, don't, you won't be needing it. And the next one is this board right here. You don't need this. Um, so let's see, you don't need this part right here that connects to a battery because you're gonna solder the battery into it. Um, go ahead and just cut this wire here, I guess. Um, let's see, do I have a pair of scissors here? You know, that's the one thing I don't have here. Um, I guess I would cut it with my knife. Um, this part here comes out. You want to keep the one that is connected to the board. This wire here is gonna go to a battery later. We're gonna go ahead and unwind it a little and take out the white part. We don't need the white. Where is my cutter? Oh, here it is, okay, so. Um, I'm gonna take out the white. Now, I'm cut it anywhere you want. I just cut it right there. Doesn't really matter. And you're gonna strip the positive and negative. Uh, just a little bit. Does the strip even work? Okay, we'll strip the black and strip the red just a little bit. Now we have to take off this plastic piece right here. There's two screws down here, so just take those two out. goes um, there is a little piece of plastic that was on top of this light right here you don't need this piece so you have this thing pops out I think it's just a diffuser for the light for the power LED um, you don't need that so I'm gonna toss that aside the only thing you really need to mod after all this after you take out everything is this trigger mechanism here it fits on the remote right here you can see the hole and as you can see, there's plastic that is in the way. So theoretically, you just need to replace or take away that much plastic. So what I did was mark it with a permanent marker here. Just go ahead and put the thing through a hole and turn it around. Um, Angle-wise, it doesn't really matter too much. You just make a curve right here. Also, the other thing you need to trim is this piece right here. So on the trigger, the trigger right here, you need to trim this little circle here. This hole and that hole will eventually match up and needs to fit right here and it doesn't fit right now because of this button. So that's two parts you need to cut. After that, everything is just plug and play. Okay, here I am. I'm gonna start trying to Dremel this part out. Over here is before I Dremel is kind of mark where I need to cut with a cutter here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this. I'm gonna make a cut here roughly and right here test fit to make sure that after you do that poke that through a hole and that this fits in here which it does uh, next thing you need to do is um, bin this PCB here flat against it you don't want to do this before else you, it gets in the way of your cutting so after you finish cutting, just carefully bend it over. If um, See, this one seems to be a little bit of a problem because the soldering wasn't done well. So I can't fold it all the way flat. Not sure if that was gonna get in the way. Let's do a test fit here. It goes in, okay. So the PCB goes in here this way, and then, so it goes this way. And it's gotta make sure this fits in here. And the problem right now I have would be this piece. So this PCB right here is getting in the way and we're gonna have to cut that off. And I think that's gonna fit. After bending all this over here and dremeling that thing off, um, the next thing is cutting this here. Just be very careful not to cut anything around the spring. Uh, I will come back in a second and see if this fits. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is mod the battery. 
Uh, the battery in itself is not going to fit as is into the case. Uh, this part of the case, this is where the battery goes. Battery obviously is too big for it, so we're going to have to just cut off all the plastic pieces. Um, do keep in mind which side is positive and negative at this point because that's the only place that's marked. Positive this side, negative on that side, it's also marked right here. Um, you're going to first peel off this plastic. You're going to pull the battery out of this housing here. So remember right here, positive, negative. This is when you want to mark positive, negative because there's two sides. So um, let's see, it was positive, negative, right? We're also going to have to take the bottom piece out. I forgot about that. It's a little piece of plastic here. Um, it is stuck on by this tape stuff. So it is going to be stuck a little bit. Then just yank it and it will come out eventually. All right. So that's gone. This is gone. All right. I'm going to go ahead and try to solder this here. Really hard to do this while the camera's in my way. All right. Where is the wire? I'm going to tin the wire first just to make it a little easier. Just make sure I don't short the two ends here. It's not very stable working condition. All right, there it goes. And then we're gonna verify that actually turns on. Uh, on off button is right here. Make sure there's no short on it. I'm not seeing anything, so that should be good. All right. And there it goes. Turns on, lights are on, so that means I got this right. After that is done, we're gonna wrap it in, oh no, wrap it, cover it, in electrical tape. I also like to wrap the antenna right there because it is metal and if it touches anything, I don't want to short. So go ahead and just wrap that in electrical tape as well. Just gotta make sure the trigger fits into the holes that we made. Yeah, it's not fitting perfect here. Um, I'm gonna have to actually re-solder this pin right here. Hopefully bending a second time isn't gonna hurt it too much. But um, solder is too thick here. This thing isn't allowing me to fold it all the way in. So I am going to redo that solder right here and I'll be okay, back. Okay, so I have gone ahead and made this slightly better. It's still not the best, but it's sufficient. So we're gonna go ahead and actually put this together. He's gonna give you two of these screws or bolts with four nuts. So you go ahead and thread it through here. Um, you might have to actually use a, I'm not sure what size this is, Yeah, I don't know, this says 564. I'm not quite sure, but I think that's what it is. But it is hex, so we're gonna go ahead and screw this in. Only the back one here is the one that goes into this hole in the case. The front one doesn't actually go anywhere, it just goes in and goes through a circuit board and into your uh, trigger mechanism. Okay, once you thread these things through, you might wanna back out a little bit and put these nuts in. Um, each one of them have one nut on it, and this is just to make sure that the PCB doesn't go all, it uh, doesn't have room to like wobble out. Um, height wise, I'm not quite sure exactly where I need it to be, and uh, you're gonna have to play with that on your own. So, we're gonna go ahead and put in the case. Uh, as you look through a case, just make sure these holes are going all the way through, like this one here. It's got a little piece of plastic in there. I'm gonna yank that out for. So later it'll be easier to put a screw through. Everything else looks seemingly okay. I'm um, gonna go ahead and put this in. Uh, once again, 
the trigger wire goes to these little gaps right here. The battery goes in the back and under the USB port. And we are going to put the USB port in first. And you have to watch out here because of those bolts that you just added in. So make sure everything fits on there before you push it all the way down. Um, if that doesn't work, you can always put in the screw a little later on, which might be what I need to do because this is not going in smoothly. Ah, oh, there it goes. All right, there it goes. Okay, so feed the wire underneath the board right here, and I'm gonna flip it around. Hopefully everything is gonna fit. And this hole right here is supposed to go on that bolt you just added on. Okay, I've gone back on the Dremel and cut off that plastic how it should have been to begin with. This is really just playing around it to make sure that that little thing here has a right angle and it actually goes through there. Uh, be careful not to cut too much into this right here because that's where the spring retainer is. So after you do all that, what you're going to do is, once again, back up the screw a little and make sure this thing goes all the way in. If you can't screw in the nut like this the way I'm trying to here, you could actually just once again back up the screw again and then thread it through with your finger on the nut. Yeah, I'm not getting a hold on this. I'm gonna get a vice grip here. And it's a very small area you're working with, so that's that makes it infinitely harder. All right. There we go, and I've held it in. Obviously, you don't need to do it the way I do it, but it's just what I have with me. All right, thread it all the way through, and this nut should be on. So as long as it's not moving around, you should be fine. It doesn't need to be that secure. But this works, so double check up and down. Everything works, and nothing is really getting any more movement. That will be that. Um, antenna wire. Just hang off on the bottom right here. And the reason why we wrapped the electrical tape is because there are connection or metal exposed here. So if that metal touches the metal, you're shorting something. So there you go. Go ahead and shove the antenna in there. Um, you could tape this thing down or glue it or whatnot. I don't really care. Battery wise, once again, make sure your electrical tape is on the terminal so nothing could get shorted. And See where it goes. So roughly right there. So this is where the battery will be. And a um, little dab of hot glue will kind of hold it in. It's really not gonna go anywhere. Um, let's see, where's my hot glue? It's here somewhere, all right. I need a lighter. And then, I'm just, you, know, you could use a hot glue gun, obviously. I just like to put a blob in there. And I'm not looking for anything nice because this is gonna be inside the case. All right, that is it right there. Ow, all right. And then this is basically it. We're gonna try it one more time, make sure it turns on before we close it up. And with that, we are done. Oh, I got hot glue everywhere. All right, with that, we are done. And we'll go ahead and attempt to close this thing up and make sure everything is working. You know what I actually forgot before all this? Yeah, the part I forgot was this nut here. I totally forgot to put this nut on here. All right. You just have to hold it and then screw it in. Everything should kind of loosely go together by now. And we're gonna go ahead and screw it in. Uh, first bolt would be this one. This is the first one that actually attaches the two sides together. Um, hold them together really tightly and you might wanna force it down because it's making a thread here. This is where you're gonna have to make sure it turns on. So it does turn on and Obviously, we can't test this. You, could, you, you know what? Maybe you should have tested this remote before you took it apart. Here are the screws. And you're gonna look for the ones that are, I think I mentioned, that had a round top instead of a flat top. 
and you need one, two, three, four, four of them. So one, two, and three, and four. And then the rest of them you could toss or save, whatever you want to do. Um, and this is when you throw them in here and screw it in. All right, so that's it. Everything goes together. Um, once again, test to make sure it turns on, and there's your new remote. Um, that took me less than an hour, and I was mumbling half the time, but um, yeah. Uh, last thing I actually do like to do is trim up the plastic a little because it doesn't match up all the time. It's not coming on camera, but you can see maybe like a little piece of plastic sticks out. So I just take a razor blade to it and you know smooth down the edges of the two sides and just trim it out. But yeah, roughly that is it. And now you have another remote that went from a you know gigantic size here to this little one. There you go. Thanks for watching.